Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Leveraging Leadership. My name is Kellen Adams and I'll be your host this evening. I'm here with CES Assistant Principal Brooklyn Wire. Mrs. Wire, welcome. Thank you. Talk to us a little bit, introduce yourself to the crowd and tell us a little bit about your transition from the classroom to a leadership role. Sure, so um, I have been in Chinook pretty much my entire life. Um, born and raised here, attended Chinook Public Schools K-12, um, left for a period of time to go get my degree at Pitt State, and then immediately came back to um, begin my career in Chinute. Not that that was always necessarily in the plan, but I'm really glad that it worked out the way it did. And I am very, very proud to be back serving um, a district that helped me get to where I am today. So um, spent, I believe, 11 years in the first grade classroom at Chinute Elementary School. Um, during that time, became a PLC leader during my um, transition or during my time in the classroom. And um, I think it was during that time that I started to really think about leadership and what that could be um, further beyond the classroom, beyond my hallway in first grade. Um, started thinking about building leadership um, and then the right opportunities presented themselves. And I ended up being an assistant principal at Chanute Elementary. That was kind of always my plan. I knew that I was going to be here to serve Chanute Elementary School, no matter what capacity that was in. I wasn't out looking for um, an administrative job anywhere. It had to be at Chanute Elementary. So I was ready to serve Chanute Elementary in whatever capacity that looked like. Great. I uh, have a husband that's also an educator, also a lifelong Chanutean. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Yes. Okay. Um, and two sons that are both attending the school that you're at. That's right. Um, my husband is a special education teacher at Chanute High School. Um, and he has been, we call him a lifelong Chanute and he's more of like a halfway. We met in eighth grade. Um, and yes, two boys that attend Chanute Elementary School as well. And um, I can't speak enough about that as a parent. I'm super proud to send my own children to Chanute Elementary School and they love everything about it and super excited to be at school every day. Absolutely, great. Uh, you know, everywhere I've gone, I've always moved to another district. You did something different. Uh, you went from classroom to assistant principal, not only in the same district, but also in the same building. Mm -hmm. That has to come with us some challenges. Uh, talk, talk a little bit about what those challenges were. Um, yeah, honestly, I was anticipating a lot more. It has, don't get me wrong, it has come with challenges. It has also been pretty smooth in some aspects as well. I would say one of the biggest challenges has nothing to do um, with anyone else except for myself and having that outside perspective. I think that sometimes um, with me only having a Chinook Elementary perspective and having so much knowledge and history of Chinook Elementary School, sometimes it's very hard for me to gain that outside perspective. And I think that that's been one of my biggest challenges. Um, I appreciate all of my colleagues who have come in with different perspectives and can view things differently. Um, we all bring different things to the table. Um, I am very much not a person that's, well, this is how we've always done things, but sometimes it's really hard to get stuck in, well, that's kind of how it's always been done. And so um, I appreciate my colleagues who can come in and say, well, why? And question things and we can look at things a little bit differently. So I would think that that would be one of my biggest challenges is just having that rich background of this is how it's always been done or this is how things operate here. And not that that's always a bad thing, but sometimes it definitely can be a hindrance. Great. Let's talk about those colleagues for a little bit. Uh, approximately 12, 13 years ago, this community decided that it wanted one elementary building, mm -hmm. a beautiful facility located on uh, 7th and Osa Martin. Uh, that building, as I show, has over 700 students, over 120 staff, and either six or seven grades or sections, sorry, per grade level. Uh, talk to us a little bit. What do you believe are the current strengths at Chanute Elementary School? Um, I could go on. Uh, there are a lot of strengths, and there's a lot of things that Chanute Elementary School is doing well right now. Um, I would first credit our staff. Um, I would credit them any year. Um, I think that this year above all years has proven what teamwork looks like, um, that all hands on deck mentality. Um, but I would have said the same thing a year ago today. Um, we're not Chanute Elementary School without the staff that we have. And so I think that we have a great staff that thinks of students first every time. Um, I would agree that you know I've been here for 13 years. I've been here longer than that, but as an employee for 13 years and um, not that that hasn't always been a philosophy or a belief, but 
over my time here in Chanute, it's become more apparent how much of a student's first philosophy that is and how we're gonna live that every day and make decisions and talk about kids in a student's first manner. Um, so I would credit our staff first, like we are doing a lot of good things and it's because of the people in our building. Um, second, I would say something that Chanute Elementary School has going for them right now would be our social emotional aspect and how we are looking at things. Um, you know, I kind of started that journey as a teacher and looking at behaviors um, a little bit differently through a different lens. And I think that slowly over time, that has become somewhat of a norm in our building. And not that we don't have a lot of room to grow. I am by no means saying that I am an expert in trauma or that any of us necessarily are. But I think what has changed is our um, mindset and being open-minded and understanding that kids are coming to us a little bit or with different needs and making sure that we're meeting all of those needs. We're not just looking at it as a behavior and a simple response, but we're looking at it more in proactive ways. Um, right now we are offering some mental health options to kids in our building that we couldn't have offered before. And I just think that that's a sign of us understanding and recognizing a need and responding to it. And that's not just the administrative side, that's our staff, that's everyone. Like, how can I help this kid? Um, not what can I do to this kid because of their actions, if that makes sense. So I think that that is something that Chinoo Elementary School is um, kind of coming ahead in right now. And not that we still don't have room to grow in it, but I'm really proud of the services that we offer and our mindset and our attitudes and our beliefs towards students and their needs. Great. The people are so important. You have a lot of good folks there at CES. And, and the focus on what is best for students first. Uh, it emanates through everything that you guys do every day. So uh, I just wanna commend you guys for the great work that you are doing with uh, what is honestly a 5A high school, if you think about it in that, in that term. So um, you mentioned that you're never there yet. We say that, that leadership is truly a, a journey and not a destination. So is the building working on anything? And if it is, what, what are you working on? What, do you, what have you identified as current uh, challenges or I, I hate to use the word weakness, but uh, what, what do you perceive as something that needs to be shored up right now? Um, it's interesting because we've had a lot of discussion through our action team meetings um, on Thursday nights. And a lot of the things that have come up um, are regarding basically when we got right down to the root of the pop problem would be like around tier one instruction. I feel like Chanute Elementary School has done a fantastic job over my entire time in the classroom there of like of tier two and tier three and this PLC idea and understanding intervention and how to respond. And I think somewhere in that whole process, we kind of forgot the tier one side of it and really that the best intervention is strong tier one instruction. And we're not really gonna intervene our way out of, um, I don't wanna say poor, but ineffective um, tier one instruction. So last year at CES, um, we started really using our early release time um, as a time to really focus on some love or some alignment with rigor and assessment. And we really like looked at grade levels and um, specific standards and how this would be assessed in one grade and how that led into the next and led into the next. And I really felt we made a lot of progress. Um, and that was specifically with ELA. Uh, unfortunately, when school closure happened, that kind of came to an abrupt stop. And so math hasn't been focused on as much, but as a whole building, we've really started having this conversation of, um, we can all be teaching and teaching really well, but if we have no continuity or consistency among grade level to grade level, if in second grade, our kids can be guaranteed this, and in third grade this, and in fourth grade this, but we're all teaching it different, we're really not doing ourselves any favors. And so then it's just kind of a luck of the draw of where kids go and if they had this in the previous grade level or in the previous. So we've really started having conversations about continuity and consistency and how you know we have some scripted programs and resources and maybe what the expectation would be with those and how that works for us and how that looks at Chinu Elementary School. Because yes, we have written our own curriculum, we've built our own curriculum, but we also have these resources that need to be utilized and to be effective, we probably need to have some continuity and expectations and what that looks like at each grade from K all the way through five. So I would say that academically right now, 
that's a big concern of mine and I think an area of that needs some immediate focus. Um, but again, that's something that we can't just come in and say, here's how it's going to be. We also need to have some like leadership buy-in, you know, using our teacher leaders and we need to talk about this and how is this going to look at each grade level. And um, it really does need to be a process. We just are going to have to work through it, but work through it with some urgency. Absolutely. You talked about the great people you have, and now I'm hearing, I think, that you're going to invest in those people. You're going to help them get better at their craft. So that is great. Uh, let's pivot. Let's talk about you for a minute. Do we call you Brooke or Brooklyn? You can call me either. Great. Most people call me Brooke. Okay, very good. <laughs> uh, Brooke, talk about what's been the biggest challenge for you as you've entered this new role of leadership. You're now uh, almost a year and a half into that. Uh, what have you faced? What's the biggest challenge? And what are the biggest takeaways you have so far? Um, I've had, it's been an interesting year and a half, I would say in leadership. Um, I would say one of my biggest challenges as I've kind of reflected and thought about this, um, you talked a lot about me being a Chanute native, a person, a hometown person. And with that, like I said, that there are a lot of strengths and there's a lot of positivity that can come from that. Um, I also think that that has presented some challenges um, and maybe not even one that I first saw coming into the leadership role. Um, as a classroom teacher, that was always a pretty good strength. Like I knew my families pretty well a lot of times, not all the time. Um, but I would say that one of the biggest challenges as I've stepped into this role would be having to communicate um, maybe not the greatest information or information that I that people maybe not wanted to hear um, with people that I knew really, really, really well. Um, I specifically remember my first few months on the job having to make some phone calls to some parents that I knew didn't want to receive that phone call, but I also knew them personally. And so I think that that was one of the greatest challenges. Um, and I learned a lot about myself because at the end of the day, I knew that I'd made a good decision for kids and for our school. And that was all that mattered. And so I think that was a huge growing experience for me because again, um, it doesn't make that call easier if you don't know the person, it just makes it a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's been a challenge. Um, some good takeaways. Um, again, I have learned a lot in this role. I think this last year and a half has presented even more learning opportunities. Um, I am just extremely humbled each and every day. Like I have learned something new every single day on the job. I'm appreciative of the mentors, um, Mr. Hoops, and my head principal, our board office that have continued to invest in me and ha have continued to help me grow in this um, role. And again, I ha could not imagine doing anything else. Um, that we have talked about that was a big decision. If I wanted to leave the classroom, that's always a kind of a critical career time. And I thought about that a little bit. You know, I couldn't decide that's really hard. Um, you don't want to regret a decision later. Um, and I will say that ever since I've stepped into this role, it was exactly what I envisioned it to be. And I um, am super excited to be serving Chanute Elementary School on a bigger scale now, not just in the first grade classroom or the first grade hallway, but serving the entire building. Excellent. Uh, we've been uh, very, very uh, pleased with your growth. Uh, it's, it's, it's been great to watch you and your team gel together. So uh, excellent job. Uh, of creating that cohesive leadership team. Uh, we talk about culture a lot, Brooke, mm -hmm. almost every day. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite authors is Peter Drucker, and he is quoted famously for saying that culture eats strategy for breakfast. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that? Um, I think it's exactly what it states. Um, you know, we could have Mr. Hoops and the rest of my administrative team, just like you said, we all gel pretty well together. And administratively, we could come up with the best strategy and how this all should go. And if we don't have the culture to execute it or to sustain it, it means nothing. And so to me, that's exactly what that means. Um, and I, I mean, that to me is a whole nother area we can get into, like as far as culture, but Administratively, I feel like that's on us to kind of set the expectation, what we want CES to be about, what, how we operate, how we do things at CES, and we help build in that culture and that expectation, but then that also passes off to each of our staff members to help carry that out as well. Um, the four of us alone in the office cannot build and sustain a culture. That's CES, that's all of us, that's our staff, that's our students. Um, but within that, once we have got that to where we want it, um, that's where we can put our strategy in place and count on our staff to execute that. But without the culture, it means nothing. Absolutely. You hit on a very salient point there. Uh, 
the four of you in the leadership role cannot do this alone. Uh, we cannot run schools, efficient and effective schools, with just depending upon those in formalized leadership positions. You talked briefly a little bit ago about teacher leadership. How important is teacher leadership? You work with these teams of six, seven, uh, PLC leaders, et cetera. Talk to us about the importance of teacher leadership and what that means to driving effective school culture and improvement. I think it's vital. Without them, like I said, we just talked about how the four of us are not gonna do that. We're gonna need everyone. That's gonna carry down to teacher leaders. That's gonna carry down to their teams. And this is probably even more important to me because I've lived this role. I've been a teacher leader. And so I know what my expectation for myself was in that role and how that could look and how effective it can be if we all um, start viewing our teachers as leaders. Um, I believe that everyone in our building is a leader in some capacity. Um, it's whether or not they recognize that in themselves. So I feel like my role is to help those teacher leaders start to understand how effective they can be, what their role looks like, um, because they are gonna be a huge part of building what we want the culture to look like at Shunda Elementary School. Um, it's not going to just be the four of us. It's not going to even just be us and the teacher leaders. It's everybody, but we're all gonna have to play a part in what that looks like. And um, our teacher leaders are gonna be a huge component of that. Thank you. Uh, let's pivot a little bit, but on that same tenant, uh, it, it's been brought to my attention that morale may be a focus for your building this year, uh, specifically by those uh, at the teacher level and otherwise. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are you doing with regard to morale? Why is that a focus? Why should it be a focus? Why would morale be important to a building? Um, I think that, again, we've been talking about culture. I think that you have talked too about how climate and morale can really be the same term. Um, and I would agree with that. Uh, I would say that this year has, this year has been more challenging regarding morale. Um, I also kind of feel that we all bring our own morale every day to work, if that makes sense, or to anywhere we go. And so I will not say that this year has not presented challenges. But I will also say that there have been other years in the past that have also presented challenges. Every single year is going to present challenges, some more so than others. Again, we're in years, uh, we're in a year this year that maybe hasn't looked like previous years, obviously. Um, we did have a good discussion with some CES staff the other day regarding this, and some of their viewpoint was maybe just stress levels. Um, it maybe wasn't so much morale at CES right now, but more so the stress that everyone is carrying with them. And upon further conversation, we kind of decided that really wasn't stress levels at the building level. It was more stress levels and things that are going on at home. And it's very, very hard when you have some very stressful situations outside to not bring that to work with you. Um, and I can completely understand that. So I think that our conversation was really productive in that, you know, it's extremely important that during this time, each of us know who our support pe people are. Um, you have to know who those people are that you can go to and talk about it. But at the end of the day, like I feel responsibility for my own morale every day, how I choose to wake up and how I choose to go to work and how I choose to have a positive attitude. And I feel like that if each of us are bringing that every day, but we also know those support people that we can go talk to when we're having some hard times, that's the difference. Um, and that was kind of our conversation. So I, I will say that CES is a place where if you don't know who you can go to for support at CES, it's not because there's not people there. I would say that that's like lack of not trying, if that makes sense. Um, whether that be your teammates, um, administrative, administratively, any of us, there are people there that is a building full of people who love and care about each person that is in that building. And so if we're gonna get through some trying times, that's what we're gonna have to do is support each other and um, make sure that we're continuing to focus on all the positives and help each other through the times that are not so great. Absolutely. Uh, what I heard is you're listening to folks you are, you are not just talking at them, but rather listening, gaining those perspectives. Perspective is so important. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Okay. Are you okay with that? <laughs> sure. You left the classroom 18 months ago. Mm -hmm. You had that perspective from a classroom teacher. Do you have a new perspective today? And how, is, how has that changed? <laughs> Um, it is. Um, you know, 18 months ago when I would walk into CES every morning, it was very narrow. I would, I mean, and I'm going to be very 
literal right now. Like I'd get out of my car, walk into the building, and I wouldn't notice anything on the way to my build or to my, in the building around me usually, because my focus was my classroom, or my focus was my hallway. Um, since moving up to the front office, you're, that perspective gets a lot bigger, literally. Like when I walk into CES every morning, I'm looking at that entire building and I'm looking at it from a different lens. Um, I'm looking over a whole bunch of more teachers now. Um, I used to find my or see my responsibility as primarily my first grade hallway. And now I'm overseeing and working with a lot more. Um, but I really do feel like that was what my intent was. That's what I wanted into, to transition to. But yes, it does change your perspective. And I think that sometimes until you've lived that or you've been in that role, it's really hard to understand or think about what that perspective is. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, what do you say to somebody that may be entertaining, dipping their, their toe into the leadership role, wants, wants a new perspective, wants to understand more about a building or a district, uh, you, you obviously walked down this path yourself as you uh, started that degree at Hayes, et cetera. So what, what do you say to somebody that may be saying, hey, uh, I really like what I'm doing, but I'm interested in, in widening my perspective or gaining more knowledge in this area? Um, I would wholeheartedly encourage them to talk to anything, anyone that they feel like would support them in that. Uh, I, and that can be me. That could be anyone that they feel is a trusted confidant to just go and bounce some ideas off of. But I feel very, very, very fortunate in my position at Chanute. I was built into that, if that makes sense. And I was encouraged and I was um, mentored into being a leader. Um, I had, when I finished my master's degree, I had no intent of ever going back to school for the time being. You know how we always say that we're done with school and I don't think we are really ever done with school. Um, but once I wrapped up my master's degree, I really had no intent. And I was very fortunate to have not only people in my personal life, but in my professional life as well, that highly encouraged me. And they said, you should go do that. And they talked to me about why I should go do that. And so anyone who is even entertaining that thought, I think that they should talk with people and they should talk to their colleagues that they trust and their leaders and that are in their lives and have a conversation and just see what that would look like for them. Because um, without the people in my life supporting me, I may not have ever taken that leap or decided to go down that path. And I would have really regretted it if I hadn't. Absolutely. Uh, we've been very impressed with your growth. Uh, we, we, we know we see great things on the horizon for you. So thank you so much for your service to our district, not only as a teacher, but also in this leadership role. Final question, what gets you out of bed in the morning? What's your motivation? What's your why? My motivation is CES, the students that are there, the staff that are there. I think everything that I've hit on here, um, I've always been grateful for my job, always been, I mean, education is it. I knew that from really young age. I think this year more than ever has proven how thankful I am to get up in the morning and actually attend work and actually attend our school building. Because when I had to do that from my home last spring, that is not <laughs> how I would prefer to do it. So um, more than ever this year, my why, the kids, the staff, Chanute, USD 413, that's my why. Great. Mrs. Wire, thank you for your time today. We really appreciate having you. This has been Kellen Adams with Leveraging Leadership. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you so much. <laughs>